So I figured I'd talk about this Clay Thompson thing, and depending on the reception for this one, maybe I'll talk about the Zion ranking as well. So ESPN had Clay Thompson at 49 in their top 100, and this caused a big thing on Twitter for obvious reasons. I think the obvious reply to this is that he's just going to miss a crap ton of time, and that's why ESPN has him at 49th. But even then, it's a little fishy because there's other dudes who have had like health problems ahead of Clay. For one, there's Kevin Love. Now, it's not a guarantee that Kevin Love's going to be out for an extended period of time this season the way that Clay is, but Kevin Love just missed damn near the entire season for the Cavs, right? He's ahead of Clay. We have Zion at 42. Which, to be honest, like, in a nutshell, I don't have a real problem with Zion on this list because, like, the last two seasons, we've had a rookie who's come in and established himself as one of the 50 best players. But having him ahead of Clay Thompson, when we know that even when a rookie is really good, it doesn't necessarily mean they're actually contributing to winning basketball right away, it is a little wild to have Zion over um, Clay. I think you look at a guy like Vucevic, right? I mean, I've said this before. I think Vucevic might have just had one wild season. And I think it's crazy to just immediately assume that a fully healthy Vucevic is better than Klay Thompson, even if Klay only plays like 25, 30 games. Because you could have made an argument before last season that Vucevic was not a winning player at all. And I think that argument can still be had, you know? Um, Going down the list a little bit more... Like, Perzingis, if we want to play the health thing. I mean, isn't Perzingis, like, the biggest what-if in terms of that? Another one's Oladipo. Oladipo is guaranteed to miss time over however many months this season. They're hoping December or January or something for him. So why does he get all the way to number 33, whereas Clay Thompson is all the way into the deep 40s? So, I think the reason for this... Part of this is like ESPN just wants to be the ones to get out in front of something, whether it actually happens or not, because we don't remember this crap three weeks after it happens, so we're not going to call them out on it. And even if we do, we're just regular people. ESPN's a whole corporation, so who really gives a crap? But the other thing is, I think ESPN is buying into the advanced stats super hard here. And the wild thing is, if you look at like the wind shares and all that crap, those things actually don't like clay that much. Like, basketball references win shares per 48, which is a number that I occasionally talk about on here, and I don't put any real stock into it, but occasionally I just like to look at it because I don't know. According to that thing, Klay Thompson has actually been a below-average player for two years in a row, which is, of course, blasphemous. Shout out to Stephen A. Smith. And I think the reason for that is because a lot of the things Klay does just doesn't show up in the advanced stats stuff and it's kind of crazy to say that because of course his three-point shooting is what it is but for example you look at his defense right we all know clay is a very good defender but he doesn't put up any crazy defensive stats like last season he was 49th in steals and he got about a half a block a game which is whatever right on top of that the warriors defense and this wasn't really clay's fault it was just like a general Laziness. I mean, Draymond was 20 pounds too heavy the whole year and whatever else. They were 13th in defense. So the advanced numbers are going to think that Clay is really not that good of a defensive player. Again, we all know that's not the case, but I think if ESPN is putting too much stock into those type of things, and I kind of think they are because the one stat that they bring up on this list is projected RPM, which I don't even know what the hell that means, to be honest. But... It kind of tells me that that's like the route they're going with this. Another thing about Clay is like he doesn't get a lot of rebounds or assists. And the advanced stats might care about that stuff. Another thing is also the on off numbers, at least for this previous season for Clay, were not super crazy in terms of like being much better with him and much worse without him. Again, we all know. That's nothing against Clay. it's just whatever, maybe the lineups, maybe it was Steph versus the bench or whatever, you know? It was also the fact that the Warriors were not destroying teams like they were a couple of regular seasons ago, because again, they just don't care as much. But for whatever reason, that just makes the advanced stats 
pick out one player in particular, and that one player happens to be Clay Thompson, right? And again, I think ESPN is just buying into that way too damn much. And if the only reason was for the injuries, well then, like I just said, why is Victor Oladipo significantly higher than Clay when he's going to miss a bunch of time as well? So that's kind of where this all ends up. Personally, if I was going to rank Clay Thompson, of course, I don't have a list of every player in front of me, and I'm not going to do that, but he's probably top 20. So, yeah. I think that's all I got. I don't really have a way to stretch this out. Like I said, maybe I'll do the Zion one. And honestly, I could do a few of these, um, depending on the uh, the reception around it. So, uh, so yeah. 